Number 28, letter A. A pendulum that has a period of three seconds and that is located where the acceleration due to gravity is 9.79 meters per second squared is moved to a location where the acceleration due to gravity is 9.82 meters per second squared. What is its new period? All right, so basically we have a pendulum and it tells us that the period of this swinging pendulum, right, it's going to go back and forth, right? Whee! All right, the period of that pendulum for one full swing, they told us was three seconds. They gave us a lot of significant figures there. So um, I, I'm only going to plug in three and then at the end, I'll try to consider sig figs if I remember. So the period here is going to be uh, three seconds. And what can we find out if I know the period of a pendulum is three seconds and that the acceleration due to gravity at this particular location is 9.79 meters per second squared? Well, I can find out the length of the pendulum arm, right? I can find out that length. How? Well, according to the formula, right? The period of a pendulum's oscillation, right? Or the time it takes basically for one swing will equal two pi multiplied by the square root of the length of that pendulum's arm divided by G. So all I now need to do is basically solve this for L, all right? Now, why am I doing that? Well, let, let's just do it first and let's see then how we can make sense of the second part. All right, so the period here they told us is going to be three seconds. That's equal to two pi times the square root of L over the G. Now the G here is 9.79. So let's solve this for L. We basically have to divide out the two pi from both sides, right? So it's three divided by three divided by parenthesis two pi. And that's going to work out to be about 0 0.477. That's going to equal square root of L over 9.79. To get rid of the square root, we got to square both sides, right? So this will be 0 0.477, that thing squared, is going to be equal L over 9.79, and then simply just cross multiply here, right? So bring this value on over to the left-hand side in the numerator, and just calculate now. So let's see what we got. So the length of the pendulum's arm is going to be 9.79 times then that value squared, and this is 2.23, okay, 2.23. And that's in terms of meters. All right, now, specifically though, I'm going to need more significant figs. Well, actually, there's only three sig figs in the acceleration, so I'm gonna leave it at that, okay? So, <clears throat> so there we go, all right, so that's approximately the length of the arm, all right? And now, so that tells us the, again, the period, the length of the pendulum's arm. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, that means that it's the same pendulum, right? I'm taking this pendulum now, basically putting it into a different environment, so to speak, that has a different now acceleration due to gravity. And now what, the, what they want us to find is the new period. So basically, I'm going to do this again. That t is equal to 2 pi, right? The period of oscillation is equal to 2 pi times the square root of the length of the pendulum's arm divided by g. So the new period now is going to simply be 2 pi multiplied by the square root of that length, right? So I'm probably going to use the exact length in my calculations, but I'm just going to plug in the 2.23 for now, divided then by the g of 9.82. So let's find the new period now, all right? So it's going to be 2 pi times then the square root of that exact value, 2.23, blah, 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 divided by 9.82. And we get about 2.99, right? 2.995, blah, 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 five, four, one, okay. Uh, if I were to, though, consider significant figures, um, I cannot have more than three because of the 9.82, so the time is essentially the same, right? 3.00 seconds, all right? Uh, but you can see, though, that the there is a difference, though, right? Uh, even though the, the, the reason why we have to round the final answers because of the uncertainty associated with the measurement, you can see that there will be a subtle difference, right? And if I consider all of these significant figures here and think about that, you know, you, you can see now that there is a difference, all right? But it might be lost because of the significant figure calculation. So explain why so many digits are needed in order to value for the period based on the relation. Yes, yeah, so I, I think I just talked about that. All right, guys, so that's basically it. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Take care.